Hey, got myself a new car. It's a Macan S. Yes, Tui, William and I rolled into the dealership yesterday and picked it up. I was quite excited about it in the end. You ready? Okay, here we go. Uh, now, first of all, everyone that looks at um, Instagram and worked out what car I got, immediately assumed that this is the replacement for the 911. It is not. This is the replacement for my trusty Golf, uh, my Volkswagen Golf that I've had for six years. It's been a fantastic little car, but it's getting a little bit old and run down. So I'm gonna donate it to a friend of mine and replace it with this. For those of you that follow me along will know that I've actually been trying to replace the Golf with an Audi e-tron, the electric car, because I really wanted my second car to be an electric car. But <laughs> Audi have been pissing me off. Man, they're an annoying company to deal with. I put a deposit down on the e-tron I don't know, October last year, and here we are, what, June? Um, they said in March, it's being built. Don't worry, it's on its way. Locked, be there early April. Early April comes along. Eh, <laughs> there'll be a little bit of a delay, but it'll be there late April. Don't worry, the late April rolls around. On and on and on and on with this nonsense until finally they just stopped talking to me. <laughs> so screw them. Um, the other thing about the e-tron is that the people that have actually got an e-tron over in Europe already have been having recalls and problems and all the cars that have electronic issues. So with my luck, <laughs> I say no to a new model Audi with new technology with a lot of problems. That was just going to be a disaster. So <laughs> scrap that plan, on to plan B. I did look at a few other cars as well. I still wanted an electric car, so I went and looked at the uh, Tesla Model X. Uh, as in, I, I want an electric car and I wanted a, sort of an SUV one as well because I've got family coming to stay and I just wanted a slightly bigger second car. So I did look at the Model X, but mm, I couldn't bring myself to it. it um, it's just so goddamn ugly. I just can't stand the look of it. It looks like, I don't know, a humpback. They're really cool to drive and they've got great technology and I really want to support Tesla because they're doing such a great job. But yeah, the Model 3 is too small for me, the Model S is too outdated, and the Model X is just too ugly, so scrap that as well. So in the end, I did look at the Jaguar as well, and I was indifferent to that. So um, suddenly, the new model refreshed Macan turned up. And I was, ah, screw it, let's just get one of those. Because I've been driving Macans for, I don't know, the last part of the last year or so, while my 911's been broken down. So I've gotten pretty used to these little things, and I really love the size and the shape and the look. Um, but I didn't want to get an old model, I wanted to get the new refresh model with the new PCM and the new back end and the new wheels and all the stuff and so um, Porsche's been delaying, delaying, delaying bringing these into the US but finally they're here. So this one here turned up in the showroom of my local dealership and it's 95% eh, the configuration that I would get myself. So what the hell, they gave me a very, very, very good deal on it and um, it's, it's very nice. So. What are we going to do with the videos on this car? Well, this car, of course, is going to be from now on my um, camera car for my videos instead of my little Golf. Uh, should be a good camera car, nice and comfortable. It's a Macan S, so it's, it's not going to set your world on fire. People that think that a Macan S or a GTS is a performance car are uh, de deluding themselves. They are a very comfortable and reasonably fast car, but yeah, you need to get the the turbo or the Macan S diesel in order to get the real performance out of these because they are still a very heavy car. And as for the base model Macan, which is mostly what I've been driving, um, it's a nice car as well, but that little two litre turbocharged engine, that's fantastic in a Golf, but when you add 1200 pounds, which is what a Macan, a Macan adds, um, yeah, they can be a little overwhelmed on the highway. So I certainly didn't want to get the base the S is a nice compromise. The GTS is much the same performance as the S, but the turbo is very nice. So I kind of consider it a turbo, but this is my second car. I don't, need, I don't need to spend all that money on a second car. Very, very nice car, the S, so very happy with this. So yes, this is pretty much the configuration I would buy, luckily, otherwise I would have ordered, custom ordered one. So what is this configuration? Well, it's, I'll read through the stuff that I wanted in this car, this car happened to have, and there's a few things that I got which I didn't need, which were fine as well. Firstly, the color. Uh, this is the beautiful volcanic gray metallic. Uh, it's a little darker than the other dark gray that they used to have. I really love this color, especially with these 20 inch, 21 inch spider wheels. Uh, just a perfect combination. Not that exciting, you know, normally I go for colorful cars, but once again, this is an SUV. And what I found uh, when I was driving all those 
Macans last year, I got just about every single colour in the range during that time. Um, and for bigger cars like this, an SUV like this, um, the lighter colours really, I didn't think, seemed to suit it that well. You know, I had a, I don't know, sapphire blue, for example. Uh, and that's a nice colour, and that's a really great colour on a Boxster and a Cayman. It's, in fact, my favourite colour on a Boxster. It looks so fantastic on a Boxster. But on a Macan, nobody gave me good feedback on that. And I, it just, I don't know, just felt a bit gouty, I guess, in the Macan. So yeah, I wanted a darker colour, so uh, Volcano Grey, done. Uh, second option was uh, leather interior. Black leather interior, pretty boring, um, but once again, this is a utility car. Uh, Tui has already made her mark in the back of the, of the car. So yeah, black is easiest to maintain and that's fine, that's fine, black's fine. Uh, I, I'd certainly, reluctant to get black in like a 911, I'd want to do something a little bit more interesting, but for this car, black leather is fine. This car has the US only premium package plus, uh, which is a bunch of options, which I would have probably got. Porsche entry and drive, uh, keys, remembering everything, very nice, definitely would have got that. Panoramic sunroof, uh, very nice as well, makes the car more airy inside, don't know that I'd ever open it. Uh, the LED headlights with the PDLS Plus, which is the turning headlights, I can take or leave that, mo that, that feature, but it is nice to have. Um, yeah, the new LED lights, pretty bright, and now they turn into the corners. Seems to work a little better on this car than it does on the Cayennes for some reason. I don't know, I'll look into that more uh, at a later date. Auto dimming mirrors, totally would have got that. That is such a cool feature, I love that feature. Um, oh, the seats, this car has the 18 way seats, the top of the line seats, which in the Macan is quite interesting. They, uh, only $380 to go from the 14 way to the 18 way. So it's pretty tempting to do. Now in the sports cars, which are a completely different seat, I love the 18 ways uh, and I will always pay the enormous amount of money, I think it's like $3,000 to get to the 18 ways uh, in the sports cars, but in the Macan you want to think twice because uh, the 14 ways are just as comfortable as the 18 ways I think, they just give slightly bigger bolsters uh, and I'm happy to get the 18 ways, I would have optioned this in myself, but for you guys you want to think twice about it. Uh, the problem with the 18 ways is two, twofold, firstly uh, if you're a bigger person, these can be quite uncomfortable. And I'm <laughs> rapidly turning into a bigger person, um, but for now, I find the 18 ways super comfortable. Uh, and the second problem with them is, is the bolsters are so high on the edges of the seats in here, and this is such a high car, it is really hard to slip your little body into here without scraping your jeans and your pants and so forth over the leather. So these will wear very quickly, the 18 ways, whereas the 14 ways are a lot more durable. Keep that in mind when you're ordering, if you're ordering a Macan. 14 ways, just as comfortable, more durable, but if you want the most comfortable seat, the 18 ways are the way to go. Seat heating, front and rear, not very nice to have, especially if you've got the winters like we do around here. Uh, seat ventilation on the front, eh. yeah, also nice to have. It's summertime now, it, it, it works. Uh, the Bose surround system, very nice in the Macan. Uh, I certainly would not bother going any higher than that. It's more than loud enough. To be honest, the base system in the Macan isn't too bad either. But yeah, the, the Bose is a nice upgrade in the, uh, in the Macan. And of course, the Apple CarPlay, which I think is a must-have. It gives you so much functionality with your uh, iPhone. If you're an iPhone user, definitely worth getting. Uh, next is the thermal and noise insulated glass. I love this feature in these cars. Uh, obviously, tinting the side windows uh, is great, especially with my dog in the back. It gives you some privacy, keeps some of the heat out. And of course, um, the windows are slightly thicker, they, they stop some of the noise coming in. Worth it, uh, worth the $900 I think. Uh, roof rails, yes, I'm going to be sticking things on the roof of this car. <laughs> As I tend to do, stick things on the roof of my cars. Uh, so yes, roof rails was always going to be a must for me. The wheels we already talked about, yeah, love those, those RS Spider wheels, especially with a darker coloured um, car, very, very nice. Uh, the lane change assist, the little lights when there's a car beside you, yeah, there is a bit of a blind spot on this car, so I would totally recommend getting the lane change assist. I am indifferent to the lane keep assist, which this car's got, and just makes a noise when you start leaving the lane, and I turn that off most of the time. And at last, I have the active cruise control back. Um, I love this feature, not just because it works so well, 
Uh, keep, you know, if you're cruising, you can longer distances, you can just turn that active cruise control on. But it's a great safety feature as well. It's warning you of cars slowing down quicker than you are, um, you know, distracted driving, that type of thing. You know, $1,200, this is a really great feature in these cars now. I would totally recommend everybody get this feature in their, uh, in their Porsche if they've got an automatic transmission, which of course this car's got. So onto the options that I got in this car that I probably wouldn't have bothered with if I'd ordered it myself, but uh, no harm. Uh, the first one is a kind of expensive one, $1,300 Sport Chrono. Why? Why put Sport Chrono in a Macan? I mm, don't know. Uh, you get the stupid clock. Um, I would totally prefer to have the uh, off-road clock up there, the one with the electronic um, uh, uh, compass. That's so much cooler in a four-wheel drive SUV car. Sport Chrono <laughs> just looks ridiculous in this car. You do get this silly little uh, wheel here, which is totally cool in a sports car. But in this car, I don't get it. Um, yeah. Yeah, you just don't need it. Uh, it moves the buttons from down here. I'd much rather have the buttons down here because there's so many blank buttons in the Macan. It's nice to fill a few of them up. So yeah, it's Paul Crow. And of course you get the launch control. <laughs> Who's going to launch control of Macan? Maybe save that 0.2 seconds takeoff. Uh, yes. What a waste of money. But no harm, no harm. I guess it's nice to have the clock. <laughs> it's an expensive clock. Uh, the second one is uh, the center caps with the colored Porsche crest. $190. Take or leave that. Um, the Porsche crest on the headrests. Yeah, it's nice to have that, but who notices? Who cares? $300. Could have totally saved that money. Uh, lane keep assist, as I said. Uh, $700. Never use it. Stupid, stupid thing. Um, and oh, the side blades in exterior color. <laughs> Who configured this car? Oh my god, the side blades are these things on the side here, and they're normally like a matte gray. Well, this car is a gray color, so you wouldn't notice. So, by painting them, taking them from gray to gray, <sighs> six hundred and eighty dollars wasted there. How stupid! And the and the one I noticed today when I went to refuel the car is this really stupid plasticky aluminium look fuel cap. I was ugh. This is so gouty. So yeah, I'm gonna try and find another Porsche owner around my area and swap that out with the boring black cap, which suits this car so much better. Uh, yeah, that, that aluminum look cap. Don't do that, that's just stupid. So yeah, a few, th few things there that uh, I wouldn't have got if I'd ordered it myself. In fact, those few options that I don't want um, added up to $3,388. So if I wasn't getting such a fantastic deal on this car, I would have been a bit annoyed with those options. Uh, the only option I would have considered, but it was a toss-up, um, that isn't on this car, is the um, PASM with the active air suspension. Uh, and that's another one of these options which are uh, some benefits, some drawbacks. Uh, the benefit is that it smooths the ride out. Um, both the PASM, PASM and the air suspension just, just add a little bit of comfort to, to the driving. It just makes it a little plush. Um, which is super nice, but these cars ride so well without it that I'm um, indifferent one way or the other. So yeah, if you want the most comfortable ride, get the air suspension. The disadvantage of the air suspension, it's not the complex system that you see in the Cayennes. It's a single pump system. Um, so the, the, the Macan can be, feel a little floaty with the air suspension. Uh, and you can lose a little bit of the road feel as well. So six of one half dozen the other yeah if you like to f feel a little bit of the road texture you definitely don't want the air suspension but if you want the most plush ride you want the air suspension so i was uh, half uh, so when it wasn't on this car i wasn't i wasn't too worried but yeah i certainly could have done without those other options but no no harm done it's all good it's more or less exactly how i would option it the rest of the car i find to be beautiful i absolutely love driving this thing it's not a sports car, it's just a comfortable, lovely, solid feeling little SUV. Very, very happy with it. And of course, yeah, you'll see this in some more of my videos. In fact, the videos I'm going to do regarding this car coming up, um, I want to go through every single option you can buy in the Macan, like I did with the Cayenne recently. 
Uh, yeah, there's a lot of options here which are nonsense options, so I'll go through and give my opinion on every single option. So for those of you looking to buy a Macan, hopefully that'll help you out. And I'll demonstrate every single option so you can get an idea of really what they're worth and what the value is to you. Uh, secondly, I'll get a 2018 Macan S, uh, same similar configuration, and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of all the new features in this new uh, new generation Macan. Um, there's a bunch. They look very similar cars, and they are very similar cars, but there is a surprising number of changes uh, with this with this refresh basically obviously the PCM obviously the new staggered wheels the new back end but a lot a lot of little things new tweaks to the engine yeah there's a bunch of stuff in here so you know you can get a 2018 or a 2017 at a bargain price now because of this new generation is it worth it to you to go up to the latest and greatest probably not you know they're all very nice cars but yeah I'm very pleased to get this one I like the back end I like the new PCM I like all the new toys lovely lovely little car so yes that is uh my introduction to my new macan i am still looking to get a sports car probably another 911 god forbid um, at some stage when the manual transmission comes out and i'm also <laughs> looking to completely avoid the first year of the 911 a lot of people have been having trouble with that first year 911 um yes i'll talk more about that in a future video uh, so yeah i want to avoid the first year uh, but yeah, still considering other sports cars as well. But yeah, for now, this is my second car. Very happy with it. Uh, hopefully next weekend I'm recording a video on a friend's uh, GT3 RS. Yellow, no less. So that'll be fun. And yeah, I have been a bit, I apologize. I've been a bit slow on videos lately. I have a new job. It has been sucking all my time up. So hopefully that'll calm down in the future and we can get back to a more regular uh, videos but yeah I always appreciate you guys watching and supporting me welcome to the new Macanius we'll do a, a complete review on this in a future video uh, but for now thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video bye then And if you're wondering where to acquire the ridiculous t-shirts that I wear in my videos, they're all here in my store, all your favorites, uh, including offensive stamps and my rapid dry towels as well. So check it out. The uh, t-shirt that I was wearing in this video is now available in XXL, a very popular t-shirt indeed. Yes, Nick Murray t-shirts, being a little inappropriate since 2016.